Hi there and welcome to another uh, Core 4 Maths A-Level video uh, from Hegarty Maths. This is on the Binomial Theorem with Partial Fractions. As always, for more help with your A-Level, do see YouTube, Twitter or Google+. As always, this is for the Edexcel Core 4 course. We've done everything with regards to Binomial Theorem except for the expansion of rational functions by decomposition into partial fractions and that's what we're going to do. So let's look at an example. Before we start, just to explain to you what the idea of these questions are, always early on in early part, part A, they'll give you a algebraic fraction. You'll be asked to express it in partial fractions using your knowledge of chapter one. Then, with those decomposed, as it were, or broken back into their fractions, you can use the binomial theorem on each of the parts okay, to expand them into polynomials with x's, x squares, x cubes, etc. You can combine those numbers and you can get a polynomial that is an approximation for um, that fraction. And lastly, you always have to state where they're valid. So with part A, let's remember our knowledge from chapter 1. We want to write uh, 4 subtract 5x all over 1 plus x to subtract x as partial fractions. Now the top is linear, the bottom is quadratic, so we know it's a normal partial fractions where we have a constant over the first distinct factor, 1 plus x, and a different constant over the next one, 2 subtract x. All of us write that line. Cross multiplying to make these have the same denominator, we would conclude our next line would be 4 subtract 5x must be equal to a 2 subtract x plus b 1 plus x. Now, if you're not sure how I got from here to here, you must be re-watching the early videos of the Core 4 on my YouTube channel to fully understand that. That should be easy for you. Now we use the substitution method. Let x equal 2. If x was 2, this here would be 4 subtract 10, which would be negative 6. We get a times 0, which is disappears, and we get 3b. This tells us that b is clearly negative 2. Then we'd use another substitution and we'd let x equal negative 1. If we did that, then we get 4, take away 5, subtract minus 1, which would be 9, is the same thing as we get 3a, because 2 subtract negative 1 is 3a, and we get therefore that a is equal to 3. Okay? And as such, we'd be uh, we'd be done in that regard. Okay, so we can write this as equivalent as uh, partial fractions. Then, so four subtract five x all over one plus x. All state your final answer. It's very important to show the examiner what you've done. Is therefore equal to three over one plus x. Subtract two over two subtract x. Okay, and we're done. So that's part A. Nicely done. Now I'm actually, you should always start uh, down the page, but uh, keep going down the page, but I'm just for now just going to keep things here so we can keep our eye on things. Now I'm going to do a bit of working for part B, so I've got a whole page to do part B on the next. It says, hence show that the cubic approximation of this is that. Well, what we could do is we could expand this binomially, and we could expand this binomially, up to x cubed, and we could take the two expansions away, and it will equal this. So that's what we're going to try and do. Before we do that, let's write these in proper binomial form. 3, 1 plus x to the minus 1, subtract 2, 2 subtract x to the minus 1. Okay, we're nearly there, we're not quite there, because both these numbers must be 1, and this one's currently a 2, for the binomial theorem to work. So keep the first one, that's 3, 1 plus x to the negative 1, subtract 2, let's factorise out the 2 here, so factorise out the 2, like so, and this here would be 2 to the minus 1, 1 minus x over 2 to the minus 1, and then we could just times that out nice and neatly, Negative 2 times uh, a half would just be negative 1, so it would be negative 
1 minus x over 2 to the minus 1. So what we can actually do now is we could expand this binomially times it by 3, expand this binomially and subtract the two from each other. So I am going to start my working off from this point here. Okay, so let's just take a quick picture of that so I can move it on to the next page. Right, so let's proceed. Let's try and do this one. Okay, so that's what I'm going to try and do. So firstly, let's work on uh, 3, 1 plus x to the minus 1. Keep the 3 out of action. And we're using the binomial theorem. 1 plus negative 1 uh, times x plus negative 1, negative 2 over 2 factorial times x squared plus negative 1, negative 2, negative 3 over 3 factorial x cubed. Okay? Now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, tidy up the middle, keep the 3 out, tidy up this. Be 1 subtract x um, plus x squared and this would be subtract x cubed like that. And make sure you can get that and you get your minuses right. <clears throat> and therefore multiplying through I get 3 subtract 3x plus 3x squared minus 3x cubed plus dot dot dot. Okay, so I've done this first part here. Now let's go for this part here. I'm trying to expand 1, subtract x over 2 to the minus 1. So I'd have 1 plus negative 1n multiplied by negative x over 2 plus negative 1, negative 2 over 2 factorial multiplied by negative x over 2 squared plus negative 1, negative 2, negative 3 over 3 factorial negative x over 2 cubed. Okay, and tidying that up, that would be 1 plus x over 2. These things here, we get ourselves um, plus x squared over 4. And these things here, we get ourselves plus x cubed over 8. Okay? So, what we want to do now is we want to subtract these. So we're going to take this line here and we're going to subtract this line from it and see what we get. So we're going to do 3, 1 plus x to the minus 1, take away 1 minus x over 2 to the minus 1. This line take away this line. 3 take away 1 is 2. If you line them up perfectly, it will be fine. Negative 3x take away a half x is negative 3 and a half x, right? And so, that is the same thing as negative 7 over 2x. Type it in your calculator. 3, subtract a quarter. Well, just type in your calculator 3. 3 take away 1 quarter. And you get yourself 11 over 4. So this is plus 11 over 4x squared. And lastly, you've got a negative 3 here, and you're subtracting an 8, so subtract 1 8, type that in your calculator, and you get negative 25 over 8x cubed. And you got exactly what they wanted you to get in the answer. Okay? Now, for part C, let's do part C over here. It's not too much working for part C. You should work down the page. But for part C, this expansion here is only valid, and we should have gone back to this and written down when this is valid. This one's only valid for when the modulus of x is less than 1. This one is only valid for when the modulus of negative x over 2 is less than 1, i.e. the modulus of x over 2 is less than 1, i.e. the modulus of x is less than 2. So we've got two conditions. For the first one to be valid, the modulus of x has got to be less than 1, which means x is between 1 and minus 1. And for the second one, we've got the modulus of x is less than 2, which means that x has to be between 2 and minus 2. For them both to be true at the same time, which one do we have to enforce? Well, we have to enforce the stricter one. This is the stricter one here. Okay? So, for them both to be true, we have to say that the modulus of x must be less than 1. 
Because if x was 1.5, let's say, yes, we could expand out this one here, happy days, but the first one would no longer be valid. So for them both to be valid, we pick the stricter of the two conditions in the previous parts, and we state that as our final answer. And that's all for this particular um, question. Okay, and that's it for this particular video. Make sure you read um, the chapter, page 31 to 33, and then complete all of exercise 3C. Thank you for watching.